We're going to show you how you can strip nickel plating off of a key. Now this is off of a Bundy saxophone. And what's going on is there's an old, um, it's an old Busher, right? An old Busher saxophone, alto, that was missing a bunch of keys and they were all brass. It's mostly going to be a wall hanging instrument. Um, so buffing nickel off of a key is really a big problem and a very tough task and you don't get a very good result. So we're going to strip this and the way we're going to do it is with distilled vinegar, white vinegar, right? As opposed to apple cider vinegar. There's a tablespoon of canning salt in there, so no iodine in the salt. And then just a, a five volt power supply. So really we're reverse plating this. Now this method uh, you can make a nickel acetate solution by pulling uh, the nickel plating off of a uh, piece of nickel. Now in this case what we have here is we have a, a brass tube and then we have the nickel on the other side and although the brass tube is making lots of bubbles the nickel is being pulled from the key, the nickel plated key, onto the brass. Now this will take take a little while to do, but it won't take hours, I don't know. 10 minutes? Probably 10 minutes, we, we think. Um, so uh, electricity, just to review, flows from positive to negative. So the, uh, the, the key, the key is hooked up to the positive lead and the, the, the brass tube. And you could use copper, you could probably even use another nickel tube. Um, that's hooked up to the negative. So positive to negative. The, anyway, this is a good way to, to strip small projects. It saves you a lot of time in the buffing room and you get a really nice result. And you can use this solution for a very long time. So you don't really need to dispose of it. And of course, if you would dispose of it, do so according to local and state regulations. We'll show you in a few minutes what it looks like. So here's the key after about 15 minutes. Let that focus. Too close. You can see that there, you know, it's definitely turned black, but it's, it's removing nickel. Let's go ahead and wipe that and see what happens. <laughs> It appears to me that we're through most of the nickel down to the copper strike, which is great. So we would we got a couple of options. We can hit this with a buffer and see what it looks like, or just go ahead and put it back in. I think we just put it back in, and um, yeah, and we'll check it again. Again, we're not really in any hurry because this is going to ultimately save us a ton of time and frustration in the stripping process. And this is the this is a power supply. It's just a a Sony four and a half volt thing. You can measure it on the voltmeter. It actually measures at about six volts. It's not real critical. It doesn't have to be high voltage or high amperage. Um, it'll do the job. Just let it let it work. But you can see that's still really. Ooh, look at that. Looks like an ultrasonic cleaner. Ooh. So this has been in for about another five minutes and still working, but I think we got it pretty well, right? Let's pull that key out and then we're going to uh, give it just a quick buff uh, and see what, what it looks like. All right. This will save a lot of time trying to remove that that nickel through a buffing means. So we'll pop in the buffing room and see what it looks like.
So we clearly still have some copper strike, which is no problem because that'll buff off rather quickly and easily. Just a little bit of uh, digging into the buffing wheel, but the cup is brass. And um, so a little time with this and that'll look good. We'll just have one more shot of this with the key fully buffed and it'll look great. And again, the whole idea on this particular project was the instrument was missing keys. And being that it was a busher, they used the same keys as the Bundy. But all the Bundy keys are, are nickel plated. So this is really going to be more of a wall hanger than anything. The gentleman that owns it got it. I don't know, through some means, but he just wanted it to look complete, something to hang on the wall. And we thought, well, we want it to match. We want the keys to match and not be some nickel and some brass. So, where's... And, and here's the instrument. You know, it's a 1960s uh, Busher Elkhart, I think. Yeah, no. It's an older one, older than the 60s. So you can see some of the keys have already been done. All the palm keys. That's the last one there. That high F. And, oh, the side key here. But the rest of the instrument, it's looking fairly well used. There's not gonna be any lacquer work done. No pad work. It's just a basic, make it look cool for posterity. Somebody in the family owned it and they wanna keep it looking like a museum piece that somebody once owned. So there you go. Another experiment is, uh, has been done here with this key to remove what we thought was copper strike, but it's actually a lot heavier than copper strike, which of course copper strike just means a very quick, quick uh, plating of copper to allow another metal to adhere better. But this is a, uh, a peroxide and vinegar solution, three parts vinegar to one part peroxide. Now, this peroxide is really old, 2005, but it's still effective and it was working. Yeah, three parts vinegar to two parts peroxide. Anyway, this, um, it, it, it does, it's a, it's a form of bright dip. There's recipes out there for bright dips that are peroxide based rather than chromic acid that are somewhat effective and have some benefit. They don't work real fast. I've experimented with a little bit of that. But this is interesting because it has stripped most of the extra copper off. So the next thing will be just we'll continue to buff this all off. And that's just basically chemistry in action and electroplating or electro deep plating. So we'll show you a final pick of this uh, being complete. Well, here's the final product with the copper stripped and then trip buffed and then the, the pad uh, touch piece and the pad cup have been color buffed and no ragging was necessary where that silver soldered in place and that looks really really great so it really the peroxide and vinegar dip really made a quick quick work of that and that to be emphasized that copper vinegar is just a cold dip there's no electric electrical plating or deep plating involved in that that's just a cold type of bright dip so there you go a little tip for uh, removing nickel when you need to have a brass part and obviously to make it nickel very easy you just buff it and send it to Anderson silver plating and they'll do it so there you have it Thanks a lot.